Our next speaker is the Divine Diane Colbert. Good afternoon, parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles. It's a pleasure to stand with you today, to stand for your rights to protect your children from being sexualized today. Do you believe that children are sexual beings from birth? No! I don't either. But you may be horrified if you Google children are sexual beings from birth, this claim being made on many, many websites. Early Childhood Australia promotes a book, Children's Sexual Development. They state, children are sexual beings from birth. They also have a presentation for educators. It claims that children masturbate and look at nude pictures in their early school years. Another website, True Relationships and Reproductive Health, claims children are sexual beings from the day they are born. Advocates for Youth website claims children, infants, teens, and adults are sexual beings. Raising children, an Australian parenting website. This is horrendous. They write, normal toddler sexual behavior. Your toddler might show his genitals to someone else, look at or touch the genitals of familiar children or adults in a fun way during play, at bath time or in the toilets. This education is rife on websites. Planned Parenthood... <laughs> Planned Parenthood states, all people are sexual beings from birth to death. Even in disabilities, Autism Speaks Parents Workbook, we are all sexual beings from the day we are born. South Eastern Centre Against Sexual Assault and Family Violence here in Victoria, a service that is meant to support sexual abuse victims, they write, boys orgasms from three months, orgasms in girls from four months. How shocking! A service that is meant to pre pre protect people from sexual abuse, to support the vulnerable, that they have put this myth that has led to the sexual abuse of so many children. Alfred Kinsey is known as ushering in the sexual revolution with his so-called groundbreaking research. Many of the lies of this sexual revolution are based on Alfred Kinsey's fraudulent conclusions, such as the one that children are sexual beings from birth. Alfred Kinsey paid pedophiles for his research. His 1948 book, Sexual behaviour in the human male convicts him for his crimes. Kinsey and his associates used children from five months old to 14 years for their sex experiments. <laughs> Documented in table 34 of the book, they call orgasms extreme tension with violent convulsion, gasping, whole body parts or parts of it spasmodically twitching, groaning, sobbing or more violent cries, extreme trembling, collapse, loss of colour and sometimes fainting. Not doing it right. What we are hearing sounds like severe child abuse to me. Not sexual pleasure. Educators used to be mandated to report sexualised behaviour in children as a concern, and rightly so. Sexualised behaviour in children is one of the major indicators of child sexual abuse.
Now teachers are being told it's normal to see early sexualisation of children, putting children at great risk. As an adult who has recovered from child sexual abuse, I don't want any child to be subject to the pain that I was subjected to. Sexual abuse steals a child of their innocence and places deep shame within them, damaging them to the core of their being. I also believe that subjecting children to graphic sexual images, such as the Year 7 students that are shown movies of anal sex, is a form of child sexual abuse. Teaching anal sex is just another way of sexual pleasure without any of the risks is a massive neglect of our duty of care. Very dangerous. Yet this is what is happening. In many cases, anal sex is being glorified. How horrific that young people are receiving such a dangerous message that an unhealthy, unsafe practice is safe. Children are told to monitor and manage STDs that it is part of being sexually active. This is a lie. There are many sexually active adults that are at no risk. A man and a woman in a monogamous relationship, a single relationship for life, have no risk, zero risk of developing STDs. When I was at school, sexual education was about prevention and protection. Now it's about pleasure and promiscuity. As someone who was taught to value purity, I avoided sexual materials. When I was in my late 30s studying counselling and family therapy, I was required to study sexual addictions as a part of my training. Having to look at these images really messed with my mind and emotions in a lot of ways. I had never desired to look at pornography. Now, because of these educational materials that were teaching sexual addictions, including pornography, now I had this desire within me. I was in my late 30s. My frontal cortex lobe, the part of the brain that understands consequences, was fully developed. This experience gave me an insight into how difficult it must be for young people who have a desire for purity to deal with the images they are exposed to in our modern, progressive, pleasure-filled sex education. Young people who are known to take risks because the decision-making part of the brain is not yet fully developed. Young people who are dealing with hormones raging through their body, so just thinking about someone attractive can cause sexual arousal. These feelings can be intense, confusing, sometimes even overwhelming. This is the worst time to be putting sexual images in front of them. I believe that many of the current education materials are leading to deep confusion about what love is, confusing love with lust. Yeah. Apart from pedophiles, Alfred Kinsey used many people imprisoned for sexual crimes as the basis of his research. Because he did not use the general population but specific highly promiscuous adults for his research, he also claimed that sexual promiscuity is the norm and that 10% of the population is homosexual. This has led to the enablement of radical activists and sexual militants writing a lot of the current materials taught to your children. This needs to be stopped. Another major push is the erase, to erase boy and girl and man and woman as normal, part of the sexual diversity message. 
I heard a story of a three-year-old in a class in Canada who played with boys' toys. The teacher told the girl, you must be a boy in a girl's body. The child went home distressed. When the parent went into the school to discuss this the following day, the parent was told they were being homophobic, a bigot. There was no understanding for the distress this had caused to the parent, to the child. There is no scientific evidence, no scientific evidence for a girl's brain in a boy's body or a boy's brain in a girl's body. Endocrinologist Michael Laidlaw regarding jazz, a male transitioning to female rights. There are 46 chromosomes in every human cell. Assuming normal development, females have two X chromosomes and males have one X and one Y chromosome. These sex chromosomes are present in every cell in the body. They remain in the cells from conception until death and do not change. It follows that since Jazz is a male, every cell in his brain has an X and a Y chromosome, whereas a girl brain would have two X chromosomes. Therefore, Jazz, in fact, has a boy brain right down to the very level of the DNA. Gender ideology teaching, such as what I've just explained, is extremely confusing for children and dangerous. It causes gender confusion and destroys the ability of children for reality testing, to know reality from imagination. It should be no surprise that as this myth has been taught in our schools, rates of gender confusion and dys dysphoria, distress, about being born male or female are rapidly increasing, they are skyrocketing. Putting children on hormones and pu puberty blockers has huge health risks. Another major neglect of duty of care is the lack of information around the dangers of these drugs. It is reckless to teach this theory, this unproven dangerous theory. Chest binding, body mutilation, hormone replacements and other unsafe, lifelong altering drugs will never be the answer to feeling happy with one's body and self. A physical solution to a psychological problem is not the answer. It's like giving someone with anorexia a tummy tuck. The reason why suicide rates remain just as high for those who choose to transition to the opposite sex is because they have never dealt with the root cause of their distress for the underlying trauma. Many wake up and find they never were in the wrong body in the first place. If you Google detransitioners, you will gain a greater understanding of the damage that it has done as some very young people share their experiences bravely. The compassionate and truthful thing is to enable children to be comfortable and mature in their biological sex. To grow up feeling comfortable in the skin they are born in. Yeah. Yeah. It's a problem in the mind, not the body. Yeah. My dad never wanted girls. I had this deep sense of rejection growing up and I wonder if I was at school back then and I had that teaching, would I be confused? Would I think I was a boy in a girl's body because of my dad's preference for girls and the rejection that I suffered? In closing, I'd like to share with you a quote I heard in a recent news broadcast. 
In Canada, parents' rights are limited and children's rights are put ahead. So the child has a right to be protected from the parents. That's what's being taught now in Canada. That's right. As parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, really anyone who cares about the welfare of children, we have to stand up for the rights of children to have an education free from sexualization and radical, dangerous, unscientific theories. Thank you. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.